well, thanks for watching Underground is Female. Today I have DJ Luna with us. How are you, DJ Luna? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Of yeah. course. So, how was the drive here? It was good. 20 minutes. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and where are you from, like, originally in Florida? So, I grew up in Miami. Uh -huh. I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, but I've been in Miami since I was three. So, this is, you know, the city that raised me. Mostly, like, South Beach. That's where I went to school. Okay. I always lived in, like, different neighborhoods in Miami, mm -hmm. but I always went to school in Miami Beach. Oh, okay. I feel you. That's how I, I always, like, moved around Broward, but I've mainly been, like, a Broward girl yeah. since I was, well, originally California I was born, but then raised in Broward my whole life. So, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, so, you are known as one of, like, you know, when I think of female DJs in South Florida or in Florida, like, you're definitely a name that comes to mind. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and you've been working hard, like, and I think it's well-deserved, you know, because you hustle, and I see your Instagram page, which... That's <laughs> I don't know what happened. I think someone, like, reported <coughs> me or something, because I got an email, and it just said um, that your page violated the community guidelines. Yeah. So I like disputed it and they said that accounts with those type of violations are ineligible to be reactivated. That's crazy. So Cause and like happened. when I had saw you post that I was like, what the hell? I'm like she just literally doesn't post anything I inappropriate. Like, so yeah, and like imagine the people who have like a hundred thousand followers that happens yeah. to them and like Instagram is their primary source of income or primary source of, you know, like getting booked for events or whatever yeah. it is that they do and then all of a sudden their page is gone. It's like I feel, yeah, I feel like Instagram should definitely do something to fix that because, yeah. like, even though we do, we should have websites, I feel like, and we're in the process of it, Instagram is free and it's really good for creatives like us who are building our empire, exactly. and it's supposed to, like, that's how we use it, has, like, the email set up, the call, like, that's, you give that out when to everybody when you meet page, in. That's how yeah and it's weird to give people your phone number like, yeah you don't know it's like oh just hit me up on instagram yeah like what's your social media that's like a common question and it's easy to give out and it's where it's kind of like your hub it's like where you post videos of whatever you're doing and those yeah. kinds of things so i feel like instagram definitely needs to do something to where like they just look more into it and they take more care for what's happening though Okay, this doesn't really have to do with that anymore, but <laughs> so how did you get into like DJing and like, because you said, so you had your Instagram account and it wasn't, it didn't start off as like a DJing page, it just started off as a personal page. Yeah. So I've always just been into music my whole entire life. I grew up listening to classic soul, classic rock, R&B, hip hop, everything. So as I got older and I started, you know, using Twitter, expressing my, you know, opinions on on music and like people asking me what I think about like certain albums that came out or rising artists I would just tweet a lot of opinions and I'm not like sensitive with my opinions I'm mm -hmm. very like outspoken and I say exactly how I feel if I think someone's trash I'll say they're trash like, yeah I'm very opinionated so one day um like a lot of people have been suggesting like why don't you do something else with your music like why don't you start a podcast why don't you start a blog like something to get you know your opinion out there more. Mm -hmm. and um, I did a poll I did I wrote should I start a blog and I got like 90 something percent people said yes that I should yeah so from there I started writing articles about just different like um like hot takes mm -hmm. on music and then one day um Wale followed me on Twitter mm -hmm. and that was super unexpected mm -hmm. and we had a phone conversation and we started going back and forth with like ideas about how I could be you know incorporated into like the music industry yeah and then he suggested like oh like why don't you learn how to DJ mm -hmm. and I was like you know what like I think that's a great idea. yeah <laughs> so I just ran with it so and what did like, you think when so what is two and a half years ago mm -hmm. So what did you think when Wale like friended you and started hitting you up? Great, like I couldn't believe it. Like I was like, is this a fake page? Like, <laughs> so I like doing all the research, yeah. making sure the account is real yeah. and stuff. That's dope. I think it's really cool when artists who are at that level, you know, they do look at the underground and like they they're watching, like you know, and they're paying attention whether they reach out to you right away or not. Like, and I think yeah. it's dope that you know, you were one of the people that he was paying attention to at that time and it kind of like, 
it kind of ha sets you on your purpose, like what you feel like you want to do right now. And it seems like it was something that was there within you, but you just didn't even know it was there because you never even bothered yeah, to explore he, he it. Made me realize that like I could, I could do something. Yeah. Know, like, with my passion for music, I didn't. I never thought that like a career music related was like a possibility mm -hmm. that's dope so that kind of so once you started getting into djing like how did that because you could you could have got into it and decided i don't like this actually yeah. like i want to do something else so what about it did it just you feel that connection to music um, definitely and really just like the the response from people like when when i'm like in a setting and i'm mixing music like live and i see people's like reaction or like seeing people dance like that just like makes me feel good like like I can you know make people enjoy their experience mm -hmm. at a party from what I'm doing yeah I've been to tons of parties where the music sucks yeah and I just don't want to be there and like it's yeah. just a weird vibe so like knowing that like I can have that control to like make an event like, mm -hmm. dope like that's, it feels good <laughs> yeah yeah I think a DJ at any party or most events where you want the energy to be like high energy you know even at events where it's a more chill vibe like i feel like a dj is such a key component in that or a good or like a fire playlist is yeah. like the it because music sets the vibe so much and even if like going from family parties to like you know clubs or like public parties or events it's like the music plays such a key role and you notice it when there's and i've been blessed enough you know to have a dj in my family who plays at parties and like he's super talented so i've been blessed enough for that but when i go to other people's family parties or events and it's just not the same vibe it's people aren't dancing people aren't you know drinking as much it's more of like and the party ends earlier the event ends yeah. earlier and you're just like what the heck yeah, people <laughs> don't realize like it's more about what you play than how you play it like, yeah a lot of djs don't realize that like i'm personally still learning like i'm still learning like how to like mix and mm -hmm. scratch and like transitions and all that yeah. stuff but like i make sure that what i play is like what I feel like the people there want to hear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you could be the best mixer, the best scratcher, but if mm -hmm. your music selection isn't what people want to hear, yeah. people are going to say the party sucks. It's true. Yeah. No, that's a big a component to know like who you're playing for, like yeah. who is your crowd. A lot of DJs play for themselves. Like, yeah. Not even reading the crowd. Yeah. Like, like if you got to like look and see like, okay, what are people dancing to? Okay, mm -hmm. I need to play more stuff like this. Yeah. Like if you're a certain style DJ, which I notice it a lot more in like how DJs I guess mm -hmm. it's like they're just house DJs so it's like okay then you should find only house events to DJ at because right. that's where you're gonna be like most popping at mm -hmm. and so or but you should expand your that too <laughs> but I feel like I've known like people who DJ like hip-hop and like Spanish music I feel like they're just more broad like the ones that I've met personally mm -hmm. but house DJs they just stick to what they like to yeah. play mm -hmm. so I'm like okay you should do that but Another thing I noticed is that even when they do have a good selection, and I think it's just because I was raised with like a DJ in my life, is that a lot of DJs don't really know how to transition well. And even though you're still learning, I feel like you have the basics like down. Yeah. Like, you know, so it's like when I've been to your events and I hear you mix, it doesn't like, I'm not like, what? What's that? Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm confident in mixing. It's just the more like, like the old school technique. Maybe like, like getting fancy with it. And yeah, I'm still, I'm still like trying to get comfortable doing stuff like that. Yeah. But I, I love like being able to like know when to mix a song and like, I like to, I like to kind of like blend songs together. Like I like to like cut the drums of one song and then you hear them coming in from the next so that people yeah. can hear two songs at once. Cause when you hear like, when you're listening to a song you love and then you hear another song that you love coming into it and it's mm, not just like a sudden It keeps change. that vibe going exactly. and you get like, like re-excited. <laughs> the next song. So yeah. yeah, that was like the main thing I wanted to learn how to do and like that's that's what I focus on doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's like one of the most important things about being a DJ is like knowing when to end a song because you can't end it too early because people are right. still in that vibe like. Mm -hmm. And then you have to know when to end it, when to start the new one, and then kind of like tease them and let them know what's coming up. Exactly. So I guess ready. Yeah, DJing is an art, and I feel like a lot of people don't realize how much goes into like a really good DJ because anyone could buy a DJ set 
and call themselves a download like serato and yeah. call themselves a dj but like the actual art behind it like practicing your set like practicing you know just playing around to learn how to mix things properly and like have it in your head for when you do go live like it's definitely a people. process yeah and because you could have something in your mind for that night and then when you get there it's a different vibe and you have to have something ready to play yep. so when you do because is Sunday morning the well you also did the every blue moon with mm -hmm. Wally right and then Sunday morning mm -hmm. so Sunday morning is your latest project, playlist yeah. project like that, that? Came out last year no was it last year or <laughs> it feels like it's been forever I yeah it's february 2018 um i'm working on another project now nice. it's like halfway done okay i haven't come up with a title yet i haven't come up with a cover yet i'm mm -hmm. still like in the process of putting together like the beats the artists and all of that but um nice maybe by the end of this year yeah be done. i try not to like rush whatever i'm working on because mm -hmm. a lot of people are like oh when are you dropping another project and i'm like I feel like I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> you know? Honestly, I feel that because I feel like as artists and because it's mainly, I think, because of the social media, the internet, not just social media, but the internet um, generation, like, you know, that we're in where people f want their stuff like now, you know, like, and I feel like as artists, you, I can't rush it because then it starts to feel inauthentic and like now I'm just pushing out information and things and creations to make you happy when it even may not even be something that like I'm 100% positive I want to put my name on this or even if it's is it ready yet like or is it something I want to even share with the world you know what I mean I feel like people need to just look at artists yeah like as um, like you know yeah we're putting out creations and we're putting out stuff for you to enjoy but you have to understand like the process of it at the same time because exactly. we're not a robot that could like push out information information yeah. information and it'd be like a one every single time mm -hmm. like it's... my inspiration to work on a project like comes in waves uh -huh. so maybe i'll work on it for you know a few weeks and then i'm like okay like i'm not feeling this right now yeah I'll finish it when i finish it and then it'll come back and like so that process for me can take, you know, a couple mm -hmm. years, but once I feel like I'm confident in what I have and I'm ready to release it, yeah, I know I'm ready. Yeah. Then when are you dropping something? When it comes out. When it comes yeah. out, you'll, you'll know. For real. And I feel like due dates for art is like very sensitive too. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I personally don't like putting due dates on something I'm creating, you know, because I don't know it could something could happen and I change something at the last minute and I don't want people to be like looking at me even artists like on like J. Cole or Beyonce like Beyonce when's the last time she said she was coming out with the album a due date no she drops it whatever she drops yeah, it she moves on with her life there. <laughs> yeah. yeah and we love it and everything I know everyone's waiting for Rihanna to come out with something and now people are starting to rush her which you know I feel like that influences artists to feel like they need yeah. to rush when you have millions of followers asking you when is the album dropping mm -hmm. you know you can tell them like hey i'm you know this is my creative process respect it but that's yeah. still gonna influence how you it feel does about it. Mm -hmm. it's true so what is like is it gonna be a different vibe from sunday morning or is it gonna be similar it's gonna be similar but different <laughs> like okay, it's not I got you. Be like completely uh -huh. different, but it's not gonna be like exactly the same either. Yeah, I'm working with one producer this time. Mm -hmm. Last time I like had different producers, so yeah, I don't know. I'm still out of. I don't know. I don't even know how many tracks it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. So far, I have like three. Okay. Um, and where do you like? How do, where do you draw inspiration from when you're like trying to create these and you're working with the producer to create it? Once I like hear a beat that I love, I like start to like think about what I want to hear on it. Mm -hmm. So that's how I... So we talked about, you know, your DJing, your mixing, and you have a new one coming out first soon. We don't know the date yet, mm -hmm. but it will be coming out. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that's going on with DJ Luna um, these days? I'm going to be featured in Femme Feature Magazine. Yeah? Coming out nice. Soon. Yeah, they, um, 
they're doing um like an actual magazine that you can order that's pretty dope and um and they asked me some questions and you know i get to like kind of talk about my creative process in that thank you for coming on the show again and let everyone know where they can find you and follow you at so my we can fix that at instagram my instagram name is dj luna 47 and my twitter is still the same dj luna ebm ebm as in every blue moon all right so go follow her for sure <laughs> And um, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and follow. Have a great day.